care for a spot of tea. Maybe. <laughs> so Maybe. you're so good at that. Damn it, Kate. I know, right? Fake accents. I'm good. I hate when other people make me feel inferior about my skills. Well, I think you need to try harder. Okay. So when you're on your drive home by yourself, you could just be practicing saying certain phrases in a British accent. Yeah, you know, uh, I was just looking. I, uh, I need to take advantage of... There is a feature on YouTube Premium mm-hmm. that allows you to download videos. Yeah. And it allows you to listen to the videos with the display off. Oh. So you can almost treat videos as podcasts if it's something that is, uh, you know, doesn't require too much visual feedback. So I'm curious, maybe I could search YouTube for accents, you know, how to do accents. Guy Ritchie movies. And <laughs> No. Well, I thought maybe in an instructional <laughs> video, like, here's what you need to do. You need to say, hello. Chips, you need to like give you a bunch of different uh, words to practice right. with, you know. Now, yeah. see, my brother and I, we used to like to speak in a British accent to each other, but we'd speak Spanish. Oh, hola, como estás? Bastante bien, y tú? Gracias. That's awesome. De nada. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, he's way better at it than I am. What age were you guys <laughs> when you did this? High school. High school. Yeah. Okay. He was a freshman when I was a senior and we were both taking, I think he was in Spanish one. I was in Spanish two. So we were using what we learned at school, but uh, jacking around the kitchen at the same time. Such a, (laughs) such a good lesson for the listeners. Right. Yeah, I think so. He's way better at it than I was. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. So got to practice that British accent speaking Spanish. My dorky little retro video game playing computer thing shows up today. Oh, yeah? So I got to hurry up and get home after the show because uh, I don't are want you, it sitting like... out in the bitter cold all day. And it may it says require signature, but have you noticed, have you received, have you gotten a bunch of packages that require signature and FedEx slash UPS? Just like, forget it. We're leaving it. Yeah. No, I haven't. You haven't? You're, you're still I signing haven't. for packages? No, I haven't had required for signatures. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, this is a costlier thing. I mean, I had a weird shipping thing the other day that we said we had a package and there's Amazon showed that there were two packages right there, but there was only one package when we got there and it wasn't what we ordered. Oh. And so I had to, uh, hey, Amazon, we didn't get what we ordered. So they gave us a refund. Um, and I thought maybe it was Monty's package. It was a security camera. Oh, okay. How weird is that? I'm like, these are not hydration packs. This is definitely different. So, Well, have you heard about that deal where people receive products that they did not buy and the company that sent it to them, the company that fulfilled the order is just hoping for positive reviews for it? Have you heard of that? No. What is that called? So I sent it to our corporate guy. I sent a picture of it to our corporate guy, Matt, going, uh, did you send me a camera? And he's like, no, it's a scam. Send it back. And I'm like, it's a really nice camera, though. <laughs> yeah, it probably, yeah, was something like that. Receive packages you didn't. But it's sealed in the box. So I don't know, like, can it still be a, we're going to hijack your camera because we sent it to you and you didn't pay for it. So now we're going to watch what you watch on your security camera. Okay. So CNN Business has a, got a package you didn't order. It could be a scam. Uh, b- 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 brushing. That's right. It's called brushing. Brushing. Here's how these scams work. Third-party sellers on Amazon, eBay, and other online marketplaces pay people to write fake, positive reviews about their products or do it themselves. To be able to post the reviews, these so-called, quote, brushers need to trick the site into making it appear that a legitimate transaction took place. So they'll use a fake account to place gift orders and address them to a random person whose name and address they find online. Oh. Then instead of actually mailing the item for which they want to post a review, the brushers will send a cheap, often lightweight item that costs less to ship. So it's not about you leaving a review. It's about them phonying up an order. Hmm. Yeah. And then reviewing it themselves or having someone else do it. So it's called brushing. That's interesting. Yeah. I, it it's not connected, Matt, but it makes me think of the term grooming. Oh, 
Ew. Okay, have you heard of that? I know, right? It kind of gives you that uh, in your mouth. Have you heard <laughs> yeah. of that term used in our industry? Well, in in radio, I've heard of it used as a way like you're grooming your replacement or something like that, or you're grooming someone to become a morning show host or something like that. Is okay, that- uh, no. I got an email the other day, um, you know, a radio thing, how to connect better with your listeners, blah, blah, blah. And these are the things you shouldn't do. You know, those things that we sign up for. But it was called grooming the listener. And I emailed them. I was like, please don't call it grooming. (laughs) Grooming has such a horrible, horrible connotation to it that I don't ever want to think of it as grooming the listener. There's got to be a better term. Now, you have heard that in like business lingo or in sports no you have not heard that? i've heard it in like dateline where there's a pedophile who's grooming their victims right yes correct yeah i'm familiar with that very bad yeah i think the, yeah. yeah grooming is really not i'm just saying that's the only time that i've heard it other than like what men do to get rid of their hair on their face yeah so if you let's say you've got a you know a third third yeah like uh, alex gordon right remember he was okay. his uh, third baseman and okay. they wanted to groom him into becoming an outfielder and so they successfully did that why would they say that why wouldn't they just say train him i because i i don't I, when was the first time i got i heard the probably the michael jackson documentary i know right a hundred percent i cannot hear that word and not think of it and I don't even think of like the original term of like yeah. men taking their facial hair <laughs> off their face. That's why it's manscaping and not man grooming. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think sometime within the last 10 years, I've become aware of this usage of the word grooming. Yeah. But uh, yeah. And never in a positive way. I've never heard it in a positive way. Okay. Well. Yeah, you might be. Yeah, that, that, I think that's something that's used in that. Oh, they're grooming them to become uh, upper management. So that means you would send them to various different training deals or training, mm, send certain opportunities or ways or projects or something like that. I think we should start the movement. Stop using that word. Okay. Start using training. I don't. I don't <laughs> use it. That's just how I was originally aware i know you don't i feel like i would have heard you say it yeah yeah that's just how i originally became aware of it was by that that kind of speak either like business or sports mm. and yeah it works in radio too yeah but yeah mm. you're you're right we can go ahead and go ahead and give that one up cancel culture we're canceling the word grooming except for when it's about bad people well, when you say it that way people many times think cancel culture is uh, not a good thing I agree, but I'm going to cancel. Okay. Grooming. <laughs> grooming canceled. I'm starting the movement. Let's cancel it. A lot of people have canceled their grooming in these in-between times, Kate. True story. Although, you know, I read and it's like, you know, if the, the beard doesn't give you a s- snug of a mask fit, FYI. Well, the groundhog yeah. promised six more weeks of winter, so women are yeah. like, yeah, we're not shaving below the knees before oh. April. <laughs> Above the knees, whatever. <laughs> shaving at all. I don't know. Not shaving. <laughs> Keep going. This is good. This is, this good. is horrible. Uh, More, no please. No shave till April. Yeah. That the, Beastie Boys? Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. So No Sleep Till Brooklyn is in some kids movie. And it is one of our most uh, requested songs on our smart speaker because our girls love it. <laughs> no. Sleep, no Brooklyn. Yeah, da, I want to say like da. Secret Life of Pets. I think that's what it's in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I tell you what. Uh, I would have taken six weeks of the winter that we had before the groundhog made the prediction. You know, no joke. Said, so, eh, you know, how about six weeks of temperatures that don't get above freezing? How would you like that kind of winter? Oi. 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 I take it back. Yeah, it's. 32. I miss you. This weekend's going to be really uh, a nice indoors weekend for me. Yeah? We're barely going to get above zero. 
No, I mean, it, it, without me even making... You know, just hanging out in your retro room, all cozy and snug. That'll probably what be what happens, yes, but it wouldn't matter. If I had zero plans or zero things to do, um, this weekend's forecast is an inside forecast. It's great not having to... It's like, oh man, I'm glad we're off on weekends. Right. I want to leave the house when it's that cold out. Right. And we've got basketball this weekend. Oy. Oh, you do? Yep. 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 Both girls, at least they're both on Saturday. But Finley is in a tournament, so I don't know if, if we play Saturday and then play Sunday or... Oh, you got to know these hypotheticals, Kate. Come on. I, I don't have a bracket. I have a text. I have a group text from our coach saying, hey, this is what time we play on Saturday. Let us know if you can't be there. Doesn't coach know that people need to be able to plan the rest of their weekends? You, I, maybe. Or is the coach uh, superstitious and doesn't want to jinx the outcome on Saturday by mentioning the possibility of a championship time? Maybe mm. superstitious. Mm. Come on, coach. Maybe. Yeah. But we've got basketball and we've got a, a volleyball practice. So Saturday is our busy day. Sunday, lay low. Lay low. Ba-dum, boom, ba-dum. <laughs> Got me on money. No. I loved that Unplugged album. Oh, I yeah. Think I, broke the, I think I broke the CD. I played that so much. MTV was on a roll back then. The uh, Nirvana Unplugged album also was really good. Oh, yeah. Yep. 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 yep, yep, yep. Uh-huh. Remember that from Sesame Street? No. Those creatures where their mouths were like off to the side. Yep, 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 yep. Uh-huh, uh-huh. No, I okay. apparently lost that part of my memory. There's a new uh, Sesame Street documentary coming to HBO. We got HBO. Um, not Life on the Street. I can't think of the name of it, but uh, they said that they basically created Sesame Street because of beer commercials, Matt. Did you hear this? Uh, no. That they saw that kids were picking up uh, beer commercials and jingles, and they thought, hey, if kids can learn these beer jingles and commercials, I bet you we could use TV to teach the kids. Da-da-da, Sesame Street. How cool is that? Is it Street Gang, how we got to Sesame Street? Maybe. Is that possible? Do out later this year on Says HBO? 2021. Well, it shows January 30th. Is it already there? Hmm. No, and I searched this page page for HBO. I don't see anything. Okay. But, well, because initially I, stay, I searched for Street Gang because I'm fairly certain that's the name of the book okay. that I read uh, about Sesame Street. Oh, look at you. Yeah, it's narrated by Carol Spinney. You know Carol Spinney? Big Bird. Voice of Big R. I. P. Bird. And also voice of Oscar the Grouch, I think. Was he Oscar too? I think so. Frank Oz did a lot of the voices and Jim Henson did a lot of the voices. And gosh, I, do you remember when Jim Henson died though? So sad. Uh, Yeah. I mean, we were pretty young, but. we Well. Yeah. And Big Bird came out at the funeral. Oh gosh. Sad. But yeah, that book's really good. So yeah, obviously, when I said narrated by Carol Spenny, the audiobook is how I consume that. Yeah. Um, Jim Henson died 1990. Yeah. May 16th, 1990. I mean, I think we were out of the Sesame Street watching, but we were still like aware. I still had a little brother around, so we had Sesame Street on at the house. Well, and all the, the Muppets in general, you know, yeah. Jim Henson did Kermit the Frog. Yep. Can you tell me how to get, how to get to the Sesame Street? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Muppets are great. Have you watched any of the new Muppet movies? Um, With Jason Segel or Tina Fey? No, I have not. They're pretty cute. The one with Jason Segel is kind of cute. We watch that frequently. It says, plan for public release, this documentary you're talking about. Okay. In the spring. Looks to be the case. All right. Uh, Sundance Film Festival is where it was on January 30th. That makes sense. Okay. Well, okay. So HBO bought it at Sundance. Hmm. Cha-ching. Well, I can't wait. Well, that'll be fun to watch. Good. Thanks, there Kate. Go. 
You're welcome. And yeah, it's based on the book that I that I read. Okay. But I and you know it's I mean I comparing these topics is a little bit rough. But uh Scientology, the Scientology documentary. Oh god. <laughs> was another one that I read the book first and then the movie came to HBO. Yeah. Look at you. Hopefully this one's just as compelling. Uh, <laughs> probably a little less culty, but uh Yeah, I'll probably still get chills. Um but different kinds. Different kinds of chills. Yeah, less you. less less frightened. Right? <laughs> More heartwarming. More heartwarming types of chills. Hmm. Tell you what, reading books, Kate, recommended activity. I know. I need to do more of that. I just started a new book and I'm not sure I can finish it. Uh, Did you tell me this recently? Maybe. I don't know. Did I? What's it about? Uh, This one's about an airplane crash. Was there another recent book that you said that about? I don't think so. Oh, okay. I had one that I couldn't, I barely finished the Dublin murder series that uh, they've got a show on stars that I watch. That may be it. Okay. That may be what I'm thinking of because I had a little bit of a deja vu there. Yeah, this book is called Before the Fall and you know it's about a plane crash, but the very like first five chapters are all about the people on the plane and there's like three kids. I'm like, oh gosh. Oh. I I don't I don't want to read a plane crash book if kids are on the crash and true uh. story. No, it's fiction, but still oh. I'm like, I really I have a hard time with kids. I don't know. Let's you know, if adults die, adults die, but like kids. Yep. Yep. So it's still sitting on my nightstand, five chapters in going, mm, I don't know if I can do it. And this was a purchased book? Or library. No, it was uh stolen. Hey, I read this book. It's great. You'll love it. And then it was handed to me. Oh, okay. And I can trust the giver. Like I, I really, I we read a lot of the same things. So I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tell you what, I really think uh, I'm going to read a book as opposed to do the doing the audio book thing. Yeah. I'm pretty well committed at this point to continuing to buy the physical copy because of that exact reason, the ability to hand it off and then maybe it gets paid for it a second time, you know? So I just, I just dig that a lot, handing off books. Well, that's nice. Yeah. I do too. I, but I, uh, when I was going through this series of books that I was reading, I liked to read and listen at the same time. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I had double copies, but now what do you do with the audio book? And now what do you do with the, you know, the online book? Like, oh, man. Trapped. Trapped under your... Trapped. Digital rights management. DRM. Yeah. But I, I'm with you. I love giving away books. Copy protection. Yeah. Great. Especially, um, once again, with the caveat that I have zero children, but the uh, the idea of giving the uh, the children's books away as the kids get older. Oh, it's hard, Matt. Yeah. It's so hard. I have so many of their like little books that I'm like, I can't give that one away because yeah. it was one of our favorites. And that was the, the hardest part about packing up our playroom because that's where most of our books were. And I feel like I've passed it on to the girls cause they don't want to give away their books either. Yeah. So we had talked about that one a couple of months back. I think mm-hmm. that you guys were mm-hmm. in the process of that. Oh, it's so hard. Have you made any progress? No. I'm whittling through the books, but we're also in a really weird spot. Like I can't donate them to the classroom. Right. Because of COVID. So I have to like donate to Goodwill or something. And I, I'm kind of like, do I hold on to them until I can donate to the classroom? Because these are all very specific, like second, third and fourth grade books that these teachers shouldn't have to spend money on. I don't know. I did find a really cool bookshelf for their rooms because Ooh. they don't have a lot of space for a bookshelf. Fun. I also don't want to encourage like hoarding of books. We probably could do a bookshelf, but instead of like a horizontal bookshelf per se with a surface that can collect <laughs> items that are not books, I found these shelves that are vertical. It's like a floating shelf, but you do like four floating shelves consecutively 
So you can stack books horizontally on the shelves. No. Oh. They're just like four little floating shelves. So instead of, you know, left to right, they go. Lay the books on their cover? Yeah. So you can just read this, you know. And So how does that prevent you from putting other things on? Because it's just a stack of books and you can't put something. Yeah, because it's just books. Because if you do a bookshelf, are you going to have things on top of the bookshelf? Are you going to have things in the bookshelf? Are you going to. Right. Collect more stuff. Is this a minimalist mom hack? I don't know. No, it's no, it's not a minimalist mom. It was a, uh, I think it was on Instagram when I saw this and I snapshot it, snapshot it, screenshot it. Screenshot. I was like, this is, this is what I want. This is what I want. But I also don't, I don't know what to do. Okay. So we'll have all the books that we've acquired at the apartment and all the books from the playroom. That I know there's a good amount of books. I love books. Oh, man. Books, 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 Oh, books. okay. Yeah, so. I wasn't explaining that right. Kay just sent me this. It, it looks like, uh, at first glance, if I didn't know what you were sending me here, you ever see those uh, videos? You see some really smart, I think it's always a guy, um, in his office, and he's got books stacked around, like probably like a scientist or something like that. It's like a mad scientist stack of books at first glance. <laughs> like, I'd be a sane scientist. I shouldn't say mad, but right. their, hair is, their hair is likely to be all over the place. And there's just stacks of books. So they're just surrounded by stacks of books. But instead, it looks like these books are defying gravity mm-hmm. and are uh, adjacent to the wall here. It's, that's interesting. Hmm. So they're stacked up high as opposed to when you said horizontal shelves consecutively at first. I thought maybe there was a line of shelves, but this is almost as if you do have a giant stack of books, but there's just like a little space between uh, the top of one book and the next shelf is what's happening here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I'm thinking about doing for the girls' rooms. You can also see coming out of that bedroom or whatever's next to this particular bookshelf that you sent me and just accidentally knocking all those off. I know. See, but that's... That's in a hallway. I would put this in a in a bedroom. It's, yeah, right. Yeah. In, yeah. in the hallway is an interesting spot for this. Interesting. Yeah. Especially, it's kind of a blind spot coming from that opposite direction, too. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. 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 All right, Kate. Hmm. Hmm. So you're going to do this bookshelf? Are you going to do this stuff? I think so. Yeah. Because that'll help us not give away as many books, right? <laughs> Sure. No, we need to get rid of books. We need to pass them on. Yeah, I kind of want a giant, it's kind of in in my brain for a while now, one of the things that kind of kicks around my head is something to potentially do one day, a giant bookshelf on on my wall in my living room slash kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. What's stopping you? Fill it full of things. Uh, I don't know. Construction costs. Okay. Because, I mean, I want something that's imposing. Oh. <laughs> I want something scary. With, like, a ladder that on the the rolly ladder? Potentially, mm-hmm. yeah. So I might need some of your books to help fill that out. So if you could continue to hoard those for me, that'd be great. Sure. Sure, sure. Yeah, because I don't think I have enough currently to be able to fill up a uh, bookshelf that goes 12 feet in the air, or however, uh, however tall those ceilings are. Books, yes. Highly recommended books once again matt and kate taking a daring stand to recommend a controversial thing like books with paper sarcasm you know i told you i I just recently on the show i said i was trying to be steer clear of the sarcasm but failing there yeah i don't know can you i don't think i could Uh, i don't know It, it seems lazy at times you know well, that sounds like a great idea. Instead of specifically saying, here's why that's stupid. And then just un- Ooh, unloading. Matt, I think people might appreciate your sarcasm. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Let me help you out here, idiot. Okay, well, I wouldn't phrase it, I wouldn't phrase it that way. I know. That's how it, that's how it would go in my, in my mind. And instead, in real life, I go, oh, well, that's an interesting suggestion. Um, and then I would have to... Think of some way to manipulate them into doing something completely different, which also doesn't sound like an ex- especially positive thing to be doing, but, uh, you know. No, just pretend you're a preschool teacher because they have to do that all the time. 
Yeah. When, you know. Manipulate small children. Hey, let's put this Hot Wheels into the microwave. Well, Bobby, that's uh, really interesting, but let's try not. They have microwaves in the, around small children. Yeah. At children height in schools now. Well, maybe not at children height, but. I follow. I mean, point, point taken. That that particular example may have never occurred in real life, but uh, I, 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 I get the general intent. Yep. You just handle them with kid gloves instead of saying, wow, that was dumb. Let's not do that. Well, you stupid idiot. Here's the. There you go. Hey, dumb, dumb. Let's not do that. <laughs> dumb, Let's do dumb. this instead. That's one of my favorites. You always get me when you say dumb, dumb. Yeah. I don't know why. You don't know why I enjoy that so much? No, I don't know why I say it so much. Oh. Right. <laughs> it's so good. I don't... What a dumb dumb. Dumb dumb. <laughs> like, I mean, it's not a huge insult by any means, but it kind of is. <laughs> it sounds like just so dismissive, and it does sound like right, exactly an insult a child would use. <laughs> right? He's a dumb dumb. Could be a dumb dumb. Yeah, I think it can be very. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, that hurt right there. Right there. Um, you can maybe bring you back to when you were a child and someone was mean to you, maybe. Dumb, dumb. Come on, dumb, dumb. Do you think one is harsher than the other? Dumb, dumb or dummy? <laughs> you're too much of a dumb, dumb to be on our chess team. Gosh, you're such a dummy. <laughs> Not dummy. It sounds a little bit different. Yeah. Dummy. I had a friend who <laughs> would say, I haven't heard him say it in a while. But he'd be like, you are such a dumb. Ew. And that was it. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Why? Is that, is that gross? Why would he do that? Stop being such a dumb. You're such a dumb. Like talking to his sister or something like that, I think would be the typical scenario. I had a cousin who used to say, oh, huh. And it drove me up a wall. <laughs> What's that mean? I, instead of like, nah, like if you're arguing like, oh, huh. And wow, that's awful. Isn't it? Yeah. Even to uh, like, even as a grown up, I'm like, it, I cringe a little. And my brother, who's right below me, uh, oh, it was probably like Thanksgiving or something. We were disagreeing about something. He's like, oh, huh. Because he knew. And I was like, oh, no, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> like, Now I'm going for blood, Michael. It was a friendly argument. It just changed. The gloves are off. Do you know that one? Star Wars. Ooh, close. Same composer. Oh, Superman. Hey. Sorry. Oh, you better be. I'm so embarrassed. (laughs) Man. You know, Superman is a huge Chiefs fan. You know that? I did not know this, no. Henry Cavill. Oh. Huge Chiefs fan because... Uh, I saw this on Jimmy Kimmel that he started thinking about who would Clark Kent root for in the NFL because he wanted to learn more about football because he only knows soccer, but he wanted to learn more about football. So he's like, well, Clark Kent grew up in Kansas. Of course, he'd root for the Kansas City Chiefs. So he's a huge Chiefs fan. And he's like, Hmm. soccer games should be like football games. They had fireworks and it was exciting. And I was like, yes, that's how it's done at Arrowhead. So, Henry Cavill, you never know when you're going to see Superman at the Chiefs games. Soccer games? Yeah, because he's British. Oh. Football? (laughs) I see so many of these British people that, you know, earlier we were talking about uh, me working on my British accent. Hello. (laughs) Hello. And. That is not how Henry Cavill talks. (laughs) Eh. Hello, I'm going to use my x-ray vision. See, I just can't do it. <laughs> On you. Um, <laughs> these British people that then strap on an American accent, you know. I think that's insane, especially Australians, too, when they can just, oh, I'm with you, Matt. Which makes me feel like, like you, you could talk like this all the time, couldn't you? We'd never know. Are they putting on an American accent or are they taking off a British one? Right? Like Hugh Jackman? 100%. Or Emily Blunt? Yeah. The dude from House? Hugh Laurie. Hugh Laurie. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Wait. (laughs) I'm welcome. You are welcome. You don't own the welcome. 
spell out which version of your welcome uh, you're intending to use. Y O U apostrophe R E. You are <laughs> welcome. You said that with su- with such confidence, especially put on the spot like that. I know. I'm impressed because that's how I feel about people texting your welcome. Yeah, I, I know you're not a, a fan of that. And I know. I mean, and I know you're not a Friends fan, but that's a pivotal scene in Friends. Y O U R means your. Y O U R apostrophe R E means you are. Oh yeah. Well, those spelling tips will help you. We're at home on Saturday night playing Scrabble with Monica. Hey, sorry. <laughs> no, not familiar with this one. I don't remember that one. And another no. thing, it doesn't happen to every guy. It is a big deal. Now, this was friends. I mean, texting, I believe, was possible back then. What was the context? And typing it out. When Rachel was writing a letter to Ross and wanting him to take full responsibility for cheating on her, okay. and he didn't finish the letter, so he told her that she goes, well, does it? And he didn't read it all. And she's like, it either does or doesn't, Ross. And he goes, it does. And it meant that he, it does mean that he can take full responsibility. So then he gets through the letter and he's like, it so does not. And then they have a blow up. And comedy ensued. Agreed. Or no. I mean, that show got pretty dramatic at times. Yes, very much comedy. And then when she talks about it doesn't happen to every guy, and it is a big deal. Chandler says, I knew it. Oh, friends, I love it. That's a great episode. That's also the episode where they talk about Monica getting stung by a jellyfish. Mm. Gosh, that was a great, I need to watch that now. I don't know why. I just basically did the whole episode for you, but. Yeah, it was, uh, it was classic. I was rolling. You're welcome. No, thank you. Uh-huh. You are welcome. No, thank you. I know. I was waiting for it. No, thank you. For whatever reason, it reminded me since, I mean, there's punctuation involved with the apostrophe and you're welcome. The uh, Seinfeld episode where Mr. Lipton, is that right? The book publisher that Elaine worked for for a while. Mm-hmm. He starts his own business selling the tops of, of muffins because oh. the theory was that the top of a muffin is the best part. Yep. And so it starts selling just the muffin tops. Mm-hmm. And the name of the place was Top of the Muffin to You. Mm-hmm. And there was an exclamation point. And Elaine was calling him out on this particular part. She was like, it's not Top of the Muffin to You. And he goes, yes, it is. And, uh, and then didn't they get in? What, did, what were they doing with all the muffin bottoms? <laughs> so first they learned you couldn't just try to cook the muffin top by itself you had to cook the rest of the muffin and then they needed to figure out what to do with the muffin stumps stumps that's it so they they tried to donate them to like a homeless shelter or something and they were like uh offended these are just the stumps where are the tops (laughs) yeah the uh one of the workers at the shelter came in and it's like, are you the ones leaving all these muffin stumps here at the at the shelter like yes are they enjoying them like no they hate them. Like, where's the top of this muffin? Yeah, it was. Anyway. But true story. Top of the muffin. It's the best part. To you. Best part. Yeah, I haven't had a muffin in a while. I was a fan of those mini muffins when I was a kid. Yeah. Some mini muffins, put them in the microwave briefly. Look at you go. Pretty good. And then I remember liking chocolate muffins a lot. I went through a phase of chocolate muffins, which... I mean, muffins in general are basically cake anyway, but... uh, Right. But funny enough, I'm not a huge chocolate muffin person. I'm more of like a a blueberry muffin. They put the blueberries in there to mess with it, to fool you. Oh, it's a health food. Exactly. Hmm. I mean, it still goes great with a big pat of butter. Yeah, these days I would opt if presented with a muffin and I was in a mood for it. (laughs) In a mood. I... I'm in a mood for muffins. I would opt for the uh, blueberry one, yeah. Yep. Because you're right. Chocolate muffins just like chocolate cake, and it's not like I don't like chocolate cake, but where's the frosting? And if you put the frosting on the muffin, then it's just a cupcake. 
And now I'm talking. It's got those chocolate <laughs> chips in there, which uh, cakes don't typically have chocolate chips in them, right? Some do. I mean, not necessarily like your standard chocolate cake doesn't have chocolate chips in it, but would you ever put butter on your chocolate muffin or you just eat it by itself? Just by itself. Okay. That's a good idea, potentially. Hmm. My dad used to put butter on chocolate cake. <laughs> uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And, and butter on Oreos. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that one sounds a little scary. I know, but it was actually delicious. Don't knock it till you try it, but... He was not a big man either. When I say he puts butter on these things, he was not a large and in-charge man. Though it does sound like a... In shape and in charge. Well, I mean... In shape. Not anymore. Well, (laughs) that turned dark quick. I know. I mean, Elliot, the other day, she's like, I got to tell you something about your dad. And like, he's dead. And she goes, we know that. I was like, okay. She goes, I Googled him. I'm like, oh, you did? And she's like, yeah, did you know there's a comedian with his same name? I'm like, yes, and he's not a clean comedian. Tell me you did not listen to any of his comedy while you were at school. And she's like, no. <laughs> like, thank God. <gasps> Woo. The kids have access to unfettered Google? In their technology class, I think they were working on a project where they had to research things, and I think she had spare time, so she was... Googling her grandpa, <laughs> which I'm like, why would you Google him? But hmm. she wanted to look up the funeral home. And so after she found the comedian that was not her grandpa, she just searched the funeral home and then she found what she was looking for. So the family owned funeral home. Yes. Not just a random funeral home. Yeah. Yeah. The family owned funeral home. And then there's a, so she can find his obituary on the funeral home website and we had a uh, slideshow of pictures that we had from my parents anniversary and so we just played it at his funeral too but it's like 40 minutes long and she was like hey let's watch this slideshow i'm like oh let's break it up (laughs) about five minutes today for the next eight days okay i assume the schools have safe search turned on on Google, but that probably doesn't that probably doesn't necessarily screen out I would assume stand up comedy. It's probably more for images and things like that. Probably. Be my guess. Yeah. I would assume. And blatant curse words in text, maybe? And blatant curse words, yeah. Maybe not. Probably. That's why you gotta do a uh, flyby of the kids uh, computer screen. Absolutely. I know a lot of these or maybe most of them, I'm not obviously very familiar with it, but where the uh, the teachers have basically a world view of what all the kids are looking at. Oh, they have those? Yeah. yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, so you can get kind of just an overview of what's on all the screens. I think maybe like, I think Chromebooks and I think iPads actually, it's available now for uh, schools that have it set up. Wouldn't that be great if it was like on the projector screen? So like everybody could see what everybody was looking at? That might be a bit much, but. Yeah. Bobby, why are you looking at raccoons? I don't know. <laughs> Not a marsupial. Not a marsupial. And one of the many facts we've learned on this uh, on, on the Matt and Kate show. Matt and Kate. Random tidbits for your life. Na, You're na, welcome. Na, na, na. <laughs> <laughs> Still waiting for the recording, Matt. That's, I'm paralyzed by the, uh, the task, Kate. You oh, know? come on now. If you can do, uh, what do you call it, show art? Oh, yeah, the, the great Matt and Kate show art that I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I think ranks up there with produced by a person in radio content, a uh, visual content, I should say. Because <laughs> that is one of the, the, one of the key aspects of getting a job in radio is that your eye for design has got to be horrible. So, <laughs> anyway. Oh, your eye for design has yep. to be horrible to work in radio. Hire that out. Hire that out. Hire that logo out. You should hire that. Lo- okay. Well, here you go. Eh, eh. Eh? This is the noise you make <laughs> when you present that logo. It almost sounded like Tim the Toolman Taylor there. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Allen. Oh, we used to love that show. Yeah, we watched it a lot. I remember watching that a lot. 
Oh, you only see the top of the neighbor's forehead or whatever it was, or just Wilson. his eyes. What was it? Yeah. Wilson. Wilson. JTT. Yep. Did they replace one of the sons halfway through production or no? No. Okay. They didn't go Roseanne on him because uh, one of the Roseanne daughters was replaced. Right. Or I shouldn't say was replaced. I think she went to college. Becky. Yeah. Isn't that what happened? She went to school and no longer I think that. so, but they brought in a new actress, mm-hmm. Sarah yeah. Chalk. Yeah. And then in the reboot, both Beckys are in it. Yeah. How's that work? I don't know. I don't watch it. I don't oh. understand. We weren't allowed to watch Roseanne when we were kids. Oh, really? Huh. Yep. Okay. Yep. My mom didn't like the way that the kids talked to the parents and it used to drive me up a wall. And now some of these shows that they're out there, I'm like, oh, turn this garbage off. That is not okay. We do not talk to our parents like that. Weren't there good family lessons in that show? Roseanne? Yeah. I don't recall. Okay. I couldn't watch it. Yeah, if you were denied watching it. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Couldn't watch it. Lori Metcalf, didn't she win just a ton of uh, Emmys on that show? I don't know. I know Lori Metcalf is Sheldon's mom, and she's also Andy's mom in the Toy Story. Oh, really? Catalog. Mm-hmm. And Lori Metcalf's daughter in real life is the mom of young Sheldon. How funny is that? I'm sorry, I'm too distracted by uh, Lori Laughlin. I mean, Lori Metcalf's... <laughs> Aunt Becky? <laughs> no. Okay, so Lori Metcalf mm-hmm. played Sheldon's mom in mm-hmm. Big Bang Theory. Yeah. Okay? Lori Metcalf's daughter plays young Sheldon's mom in the TV show Young Sheldon. And then was there something about Lori Laughlin or no? You said Lori Laughlin, so I don't know. I thought maybe I heard you say Lori Laughlin at first. Okay, never mind. Um, awards and nominations for Lori Metcalf. This is from emmys.com slash bios slash Lori dash Metcalf, FYI. Mm-hmm. Uh, 11 nominations, three Emmys. Yeah. It's an honor to be nominated. Outstanding supporting actress in a comedy series 2018 for Roseanne. Uh, guest actress in a comedy series for Big Bang Theory. Guest actress in a drama series for Horace and Pete's something. What? Mm. Okay. Missed that one. Outstanding lead actor. Blah, 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 blah. And there we go. Uh, 1994, 1993, 1992 were her uh, Emmy wins for Roseanne. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah, great actress. Anyway, there we go. Now we're all caught up on Lori Metcalf. I don't think Lori Laughlin had. Let's see. Lori Laughlin Emmys. <laughs> I'm going to guess no. Lori Laughlin prison time is what's going to come up. <laughs> yeah, that's the first. Well, the first article is IMDB. This is from DuckDuckGo, of course. And then, yeah, the next two are about her going to prison. Uh, Lori Laughlin Awards, IMDb. Oh, a Daytime Emmy Award nominee for CBS School Break Special, No Means No. Oh. Movie Guide Award nominee for When Calls the Heart, 2014 production, Most Inspiring Performance in Television. Uh, winner of the Prism Award for Oh, Summerland. Remember that being a show? Summerland? It sounded like you said prison award. Did you say prism? Prism. B-R-I-S-M. Teen Choice Award nominee for parental unit. Oh, not for Aunt Becky. I don't see any. Let's see. I don't see Full House on this page. Uh, Oh, she was a TV Land Award nominee for quintessential non-traditional family Full House. But that was shared with Candace Cameron Bure. Is that who you say her name? Bure? I believe so. Bure. Bure. Dave Coulier, Mary Kate Olson, Ashley Olson, Bob Saget, John Stamos, Jody Sweeten to the oldies. That's uh, <laughs> nah, stupid. Jody Sweeten. <laughs> I saw Dave Coulier do stand up in Kansas City. Really? How yeah. long ago was that? Uh, I think we went in high school. It was been 99 or 2000, I oh, think. Oh, wow. Did he do any of the old stuff? Like, cut it out. Cut it out. I think he did do... I think he may have done that at the beginning. I think he may have been like, all right, just to get it out of the way. Cut it out. A little Ranger Rick or Ranger Ranger Joe. 
Ranger Joe. Ranger Joe. He's the smartest guy I know, Ranger Joe. How about that? You could sing Wake Up San Francisco, but I can sing Ranger Joe. Wake up, then a... Yeah, not nearly as many lyrics in that one. No. And uh, what was it, a woodchuck? Wasn't that the animal? In fact, I just shared the photo of Dave Couillet with the woodchuck. Uh, is it Chucky the woodchuck? I don't know. I shared a photo of that with... Uh, there was a, a group of my friends were chatting. Uh, my friends that are building a house, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, they're like, man, we've got, all this, we've got all this leftover wood. And then s- someone followed up with... Had their followed up with, you said wood... And then I posted the photo of Dave Coulier with that woodchuck. Did someone say wood? And I didn't get any emoji reaction on that one. Oh. And now, see, I even think of the Geico commercials where it's the woodchucks chucking the wood into the water and the farmer comes out and he's like, darn you woodchucks, quit chucking my wood. I well, had to uh, bring down uh, Dave Coulier's bit by uh, mentioning a Geico ad, but okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit more relevant. My bad. How dare you? 